photographer and commercial director, Noel Guevara. Noel, thank you. Hi, good afternoon. So I'm Noel, I'm an underwater videographer and photographer, and also a commercial director by day. So I'll be talking about TV and how it helps me in what I do. So this is a more technical uh, side of the, of the presentation. Um, I will get this remote. So the, the task of an underwater photographer just like me uh, is to bring the ocean much closer to the hearts of a wider audience. Now this is very difficult because most people have uh, only seen the surface, only have GoPros. So having something like this, and I've seen my photos on this TV, my video, and I was completely blown away. So let me cue on the photos. So all I have to do is uh, go to the input. So there's a live demo going on right now. And uh, mass storage, photo. So the, the TV obviously is made for video, right? But now I'll show you probably 10 photos and to give you a bit of context on what I do and demonstrate also the features of the TV. So let's start with this one. So we only have it on the screen here, unfortunately. So if you want to scoop over, feel free. So the photos that I've shot are uh, photographed in resolutions that are higher than 4K. So sometimes they're 5K because it's a DSLR, a DSLR camera. Anyway, so this photo was taken in 2015. Uh, it was uh, in Monachol in Malapascua. That's a fresher shark with two divers. So it generated a lot of discussion, especially when it was featured in National Geographic because people aren't used to seeing sharks and people in such close proximity in a very non-threatening situation. So I took it upon myself to comment on all the questions for that photo, and I realized that that's the job of a photographer, is to start a dialogue with these guys. Next would be a close-up of the Thresher Shark. So here, this photo was taken at uh, 100, probably more than 100 feet deep at 5 a.m. So, and, and strobes weren't allowed in Monancho because, uh, because of the eyes of the shark. And if you bump your ISO to 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, obviously there will be noise. And while I was able to take that a bit and post, the TV does it pushes it a little further by managing the noise. So hence, this is the noise reduction in action. And this was pretty close, probably a foot away from me. So it's very hard to photograph sharks, actually, compared to what you see in Jaws. It's a, uh, you're very stigmatized. So when Jaws came out, scared us all out of the water. It was very hard to make people care about sharks. We, uh, 100 million sharks are killed every year for sharks with two. And I think only five uh, human casualties come out from shark encounters. So there's a big disparity right there. Of course, I also photograph um, the cousins of sharks would be the rays. You know? And I photographed this in Tubataha last year. And you can see here uh, a very, very good uh, demonstration of the black point that, I'm, that they've been discussing. As a photographer and a director, I'm very concerned about the tonality of the films that I do or the photographs that I take. I want to make sure that black is really black so the colors are actually on point. And if you see here, the gradations of black on the pattern underneath the, the manta. So those are like fingerprints. So you can identify an individual, I will use the magic remote, to identify if that is the shark, that, uh, sorry, the ray that they are, are there studying. And then there are some situations in uh, underwater. Light is very different. They behave very differently, especially color. So you can have in one frame, such as this one, where it's very, very bright because you have the sun, but you also have shadows on the lower right, uh, lower right part of the frame. Now having uh, a, a TV that's capable of interpreting HDR or high dynamic range is a big advantage for us. So we tried to when we think when I took this photo and I brought it back in post, I had to bring out more detail from the highlights and then also from the shadows. Usually when we present to, on workshops or in coastal communities with LED projectors, uh, they don't capture that. So this TV actually does. <laughs> Okay, but it's not all just for inspiration. So this is a photo of obviously a butanding, and photos like this one help uh, marine scientists to identify 
uh, different individuals of whale sharks. So those spots that you see there, again, are like fingerprints. So they have, helps them identify if this shark passed already through the Bataha or in Oslo or in Tunsol. So we use the left side. We, we look at the left side of the shark, but in this case, uh, for, for this video, uh, for this photo, we have the right side. And then you have um, people who are into conservation itself of the reef. Now, most of our reefs are damaged because of destructive fishing and, uh, uh, and, and bleaching. And when people come together and donate funds, resources, and time, they want to see where it goes. So taking a photo of something like this, where you have structures holding up uh, coral heads, and they see it, and you see the vividness, uh, the vivid color, it's very inspiring, and it's very, it's sort of a validation also for them. I'm also very passionate about uh, single-use plastic. So this is a photo I took in Balikasag and it was used by National Geographic last month for their Planet or Plastic campaign, so for their uh, online initiatives. So again, you can see how bright it is behind the, the, the bag or the subject and how dark it is around it. So again, this is the first time I've seen it uh, this clear and with this so much detail. But at the end of the day, our role is really also to instill national pride. Uh, this is a photo I've taken of uh, my friend who was in Tumataha. So I'm very fortunate to share with you that this will be uh, in one of the Naia airports uh, next month um, to promote Tumataha's 30 years. So here you can see everything in play. Noise reduction, uh, accurate black, vivid color, everything is just right there. And if only the print itself or the billboard could be like this, that would be so much more impressive. And not just the Bataha, another gem is Bohol in Balikasag, which is a marine key biodiversity area. And there's also another uh, display, if I'm not mistaken, that we're coming out here in the, in the museum. And turtles are my favorite subjects, of course. So they're very cute, they're very cuddly. So I like when I take them, I get to get people to, to, to be more into conservation. Which is actually a bit different when it comes to sharks. Sharks, people don't like sharks, so it's hard to make them love them. So, but being able to capture portraits like this in the shark beforehand gives you a sense of their personality and uh, sort of, it's a, I, it's a wrong term, but sort of humanizes them uh, for the viewer. Now, it, the, the, the TV itself is very impressive, impressive to have as a tool when we try to share our efforts with. Uh, with communities, with students, but I know it's highly improbable for me to be able to bring this technology with me when I travel, when I give workshops. But in institutions such as the museum right here, you can really be immersed in the photos and the videos that we have taken. It's a different level of appreciation that you get. So if, like James said, the, vid the, the, the TV itself is a talking piece already, what more about the photo? So it pushes that even further. So normally I use my, um, my Instagram to, for my advocacy. So if you want to know more, just visit my Instagram. I make use of the, the micro-blogging capabilities so I can share a bit of bite-side bite information and also share the photos as well. So you know, it's, a, it's a very quick turnaround. But if photos are worth a thousand words, what more about video? And that's what I will share next. So. I will just have to cue it again, so this is the demo. Go to HDMI 4. And then, so a bit about the video. Uh, we shot this last year, so I was commissioned to shoot video. This, these are the projects that I love. Shoot the video for the National Museum to showcase Bohol, the Bohol Sea, as a biodiversity, biodiversity area. Um, we were very lucky because the, the weather cooperated and all the usual suspects, the reef, the, sh the turtles, they all came out. Uh, we wanted whale sharks and mantas, but they, it wasn't the season for it. But anyway, it's a, it's, a, it's a great experience and I hope you get to see it the way we, are, we saw it underwater, at least I saw it. Thank you. Thank you. 